Let's talk about the Chiefs officially, officially signing defensive end Carlos Dunlap to his one-year deal. Look at some standout notes from training camps, practice today, as well as some highlights from Kelsey, MBS Juju, and much freaking more. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, aka the Abominable Red Bearded Racer, or sometimes known as the Red Bearded Brew Boy because I like coffee, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs, so definitely make sure to sub if you're new to make your entire day. Hit that like button if you like these painted letters over here. HBTC stands for How About Those Chiefs, by the way, in case you were wondering. And let's get into this video, starting first with some Carlos Dunlap news. I dropped a video earlier today, but the Chiefs announced that they were signing Dunlap to a one-year deal worth up to $8 million, and just recently made it officially official. Per Matt Derrick of Chiefs Digest, the Chiefs make things official with the signing of defensive end Carlos Dunlap, and to make room for him on the roster, they waived tight end Mark Vital to keep things at 90. Yeah, Vital getting waived, to me at least, is not a complete surprise. After all, he was more of an explorative slash developmental player at best, and I guess he wasn't vital to the team. Yeah. Corny and too soon. Anyway, moving on. We could see this man back, but time will certainly tell. And on the subject of Dunlap, here's what Chris Jones had to say about the man himself today during his presser. I mean, Carlos Dunlap, uh, his resume speaks for itself. I think he had seven or eight sacks last year for Seattle. He's a high character guy. I trained with him this offseason um, in Miami, and um, he's a veteran guy that's had a lot of experience in this league. And um, to have a veteran a guy like that in this position group, I think it'd be remarkable. So that's certainly interesting. Jones trained in the offseason with Dunlap in Miami. Could he maybe have played a small, unofficial recruiting role in getting Dunlap here? I don't know. Maybe. Jones said himself, I would love to play with you. No, we don't really talk about... You know, I always told him I'd love to play with you, you know what I mean? Uh, so again, if anything, it was a very small amount of recruiting, but either way, it had to have played a wee bit of a role, to say the least. Dunlap also wants to play for a winning organization that gets a few W's now and again, and that is not going to be for his previous team, the Seahawks this season at least, nor the Panthers, who also showed interest in Dunlap as well. Although, shout out to Baker Mayfield getting out of the Browns situation and to the Panthers. Hats off to you, but it's not going to be the Panthers either. So yeah, it makes sense why he came to KC with his connection to Jones and the chance to get himself a ring. Also today, the chief senior reporter Matt McMullen dropped a get to know you sort of an article on Dunlap and I found a couple things worth noting to you all that were in there. Dunlap appeared in all 17 games for Seattle last season, leading the team with 8.5 sacks, recording seven of those sacks over the final six games. And PFF graded him as the number 26th overall defensive end in the NFL, minimum 400 snaps. And he actually earned the best tackling grade in the league. The six foot six, 285 pound monster didn't miss a single tackle on the season. So that's very freaking impressive. And then Ron Kopp Jr. from Arrowhead Pride shared an article today as well on how Dunlap fits in with the Chiefs. And here's what he had to say. In Kansas City, Dunlap will be penetrating a rotation at defensive end that is headed by Clark, rookie George Karloftis, and Mike Dana. It's not likely that he's a starter if everyone's healthy, but he should be able to eat a good chunk of snaps in either phase of the game. Think about former Chief Alex Okafor. Last season, he played 41% of the team's snaps. That's likely on the higher side of the expectation for how much Dunlap will play, but he should be a much more impactful player on those snaps than Okafor was, especially in 2021. And the bottom line from Ron Kopp Jr. on Dunlap is this. Dunlap was brought in to improve the pass rush unit. He will absolutely do that, giving them a more disruptive pass rusher in both getting to the QB and getting his hands on passes. I think he had like seven or eight passes batted down last season. I'll double check that and throw it up on the page, but that's definitely something you cannot overlook because if he's not getting sacks, he's knocking the ball to the freaking ground and you love to see it. Anyway, Ron Cobb Jr. goes on to say it's very similar to acquiring Melvin Ingram last year, but this is happening before the season, giving the pass rush a full season to reach its potential, not just the second half of the year. Yeah, we all know how much impact Melvin Ingram the third had on defense, so I'm excited to see what kind of impact Dunlap is going to have, especially with him being around for the entire season. All right, from here, let's talk Chiefs training camp via some overview notes from Arrowhead Pride Zone, Pete Sweeney. He started off noting that Orlando Brown Jr. was still a no-show to training camp, but that's been the expectation thus far. Who knows when Brown will show for camp? 
if at all. But in his stead, it appears that Roderick Johnson is still taking the left tackle snap. So while Andy Reid recently said they will continue progressing through players at the position, they've remained steadfast with Roderick Johnson thus far. Joe Tooney spoke to the media today and said that Johnson is doing well, digging into the playbook and communicating a lot. But what more would you expect from a guy fighting for a spot on the roster and filling in for Orlando Brown Jr.? You would expect him to do all of the above and more. So, okay, cool. Anyway, Sweeney noted that there was a brief scare today at practice. His safety, Justin Reed, was seen walking off to the injury tent with a trainer. But after about 15 minutes time, Reed got his little helmet and ran back to the sideline. Unfortunately, though, was not allowed, I guess, to re-enter scrimmage. But the chief said he's fine after the workout. So, Maybe something minor, a tweak, a cramp, we may never know. Pete said a positive of that experience happening with Reed coming off the field was that safety Brian Cook got some reps working next to Juan Thornhill, and Spags always likes his young guys getting some reps out there with the starters because, as we all know, there will come a time and a place during the season when an injury happens in a game, and then that young guy will then become that guy. And Spags also noted that there's a ton of young players on the team this season and actually seemed to infer that it was more young players than he actually would like. He didn't directly say that, but that's the vibes I got. He also noted that safety, Nazi Johnson is running at cornerback, which is certainly interesting and worth noting. And then when Spags was asked about what kind of leadership impact Justin Reed is having, he actually instead brought up Juan Thornhill. Spags said this, the guy who has stepped up is Juan Thornhill. I'm talking about out here from a communication standpoint and running the show. He's kind of taken that upon himself. So that's a cool nod to Thornhill from Spags, which makes sense because technically Juan is a vet out here and also the guy who recently said you can bet on him having an all-pro season. Will he have an all-pro season? I don't really know, but Juan certainly seems to think so at least. Anyway, back to Sweeney's notes as Pete mentioned that in 7-on-7s, seven seven, tight end Noah Gray looks a tick faster than he was last year. Probably not much to mention here, but perhaps Gray lost a wee bit of weight to pick up a wee bit of speed. I say we way too much, but I'm Irish. What do you expect? Anyway, with the Chiefs projected to keep three to four tight ends, Blake Bell and Noah Gray are the ones to watch. I do see Kelsey, obviously, and Fortson making the roster and Blake Bell for his blocking and tight end sneaks, the creative ways they use him. And Noah Gray is young and has played over 60% of his snaps last season on special teams. So I see him making it as well. I would be very surprised if they went with three tight ends over four at the moment, but time will certainly tell there. I mean, here's a theory. They keep four tight ends, keeping Gray on to play more special teams reps so they don't have to necessarily lean as heavily on the wide receivers doing special teams reps like they had last year with Marcus Kemp and Byron Pringle. That's just a random tangent from Redbeard himself way off script. Let's get back to Sweeney's notes. He says back to sevens, Willie Gay had a nice pass breakup, nearly picking Mahomes off. And then another linebacker could be seen forcing a fumble, and that was linebacker Elijah Lee. The grass was wet, though, so let's just blame it on the grass, maybe. Running back Jarek McKinnon could be seen mixing things up in the passing game as well during sevens, which is a familiar sight to those of us who saw how much he contributed in the passing game late last season. And on the subject of running backs, Clyde was there and looking healthy, wearing no compression sleeve today, and he actually spoke to the media after practice. Apparently, he seemed to not know why he was on the pup list after practice. A very odd ordeal, if you ask me, but during his presser, he shared that he feels very confident in himself and his abilities this upcoming season. Then he referred to himself as one of the best pass-catching backs in the league and basically said he's willing to bet one of his fancy cars on that fact. He literally said this. You know, I'm a thousand and ten percent confident in my hands. I feel like I'm, I'm one of the best pass catchers as far as you know, running back in the league, and I'll, I'll completely stand on that. So there you have it, CEH coming in hot with guns blazing and a chip on his shoulder the size of Skip Bayless's ego. Poor guy, talking about Skip. It makes sense though, CEH has been doubted, ridiculed, called a bust of a draft pick, and then of course on top of all of that has been dealt with you know, some unfortunate injuries, which included off-season gallbladder surgery last year as well. So you can tell he's hungry to prove everyone wrong this season. And honestly, I'm here for all of it. In fact, I'm ready to get the freaking popcorn and watch this man eat. I feel it in my spine that is currently having issues that CEH is going to have a great season this year. Will I be right? I have no freaking idea, but we will definitely find out soon. Clyde then spent a lot of time talking about the importance that it is learning the playbook, not only for the benefit of yourself, 
which he feels like he has the playbook pretty much down with this being his third year. But for the benefit of the entire team and had a lot of good nuggets in his presser, and this was actually one of my favorite pressers from a player recently and definitely worth the listen slash watch. If you have the time, link in description. From here, let's talk wide receivers for a moment. MBS had a better day two than day one, catching a TD against McDuffie during sevens. But the standout receiver again, was Juju Smith-Schuster. Surprise! This is no surprise. Come on now. He's someone I've been predicting to be wide receiver one after Kelsey for a while now, and he's continuing to shine here at training camp thus far. You can see this incredible grab from Juju right here in coverage, which was honestly pretty incredible from Joshua Williams, but Juju is just showing out and so far showing to us all why he only signed a one-year deal with KC and is willing to bet on himself this season to land a bigger payday whether it's with the Chiefs or some other team next season. And yeah, he's looking like he's going to be worth every penny so far. And yesterday, Juju spoke to the media and he definitely seemed excited about his opportunity here in KC. Yeah, I mean, this offseason, we've, we've just been working out uh, every single day. Um, Pat stays in Dallas. You know, Pat calls, hey, you know, we're we're throwing these days. If you're out here, come out, make it out. And, and I think over the time, and you could just see it out here, uh, you know, Pat's making throws and, you know, I'm making those catches. And, you know, I came here to win. And this is a team that wins, so uh, it shall prove. You know, today it was just like the first taste of, you know, what I got to show. So there you have it from the words of my perceived to be wide receiver one himself. What are you guys most excited about from training camp thus far, though? Let me know in the comment section down below. And let's argue about it down there in the comment section per usual. From here, I want to give a few shout outs to some super thanks comments. There's honestly a lot that I've missed over the few days, so I just grabbed a few of the recent ones. Chris Schaefer sent over a 10 bomb saying, thanks, you're welcome. Hoove dropped a five saying, get healthy. How about those Chiefs? David Potter dropped a quick two piece. Randy Moran said, just wanted to say thank you for still bringing me the best Chiefs content on all of YouTube. Just get better soon, you red bearded brew boy. Well, you're freaking welcome, bro. So let's freaking go. And then John P hit with a quick 10 as well with a very encouraging message that you guys should maybe like to hear. Cole, you've started a little movement, brother. Even though your channel is relatively young, you're already a part of my daily routine. And based on the feedback from other fans, I think a lot of people feel the same. Keep up the good work. I hope your back gets better soon. And I hope that one day you get big enough to do this full time and only get up at 4 a.m. in the morning if you wanna, not because you have to. Well, I appreciate that, man. Thanks for all the support, the encouraging words. We are definitely just getting started here on this channel. And health pending, of course, I have some big plans and some wild news for you all this upcoming season, but let's pause while I get healthy. Make sure to leave a bearded comment or a super thanks to potentially be featured in an upcoming vid. Like this video if you haven't yet for the algorithm, sub for more news like this, then check out this video here, boop, boop, which is a live stream from RGR this very evening. And until next time, let's go, let's freaking go. How about those two?